Good morning, another week. It's Monday the 24th of August, 2020. Pastor Ron Jetter, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Grandview, Washington. It's going to be in the 90s all week again. Boy, and August is often often a hazy month because of the wildfires. Remember that old song, Bring Back Those Lazy, Crazy, Hazy Days of Summer? You remember that song? Well, now we know what the hazy's all about. Although, I have to admit, I don't think it's nearly as bad this year. Down where my daughter lives in Sacramento, uh, the air's just about unbreathable with 20 major fires going on throughout the state of California several of them in uh, Northern California. We are fortunate that this year it hasn't been bad. I frequently go to Yakima Clean Air Authority or Yakima Air Quality, and then I will click on the uh, current air quality and that brings up the map of the state of Washington and I can click on a site in Prosser and a site in Sunnyside and watch those values. And if it's uh, 50 parts per million or less of what's called the 2.5 particulate. It's the size of particulate that's especially irritating to the lungs and the eyes. Uh, it makes for pretty sunsets, and that's the only nice thing about it. But if that's 50 or below, it'll be green, and the green dot on the map is good. A green, uh, green zone on the, the little scale is great gets into the yellow 50 to 100 not as good 100 150 well it was over 300 uh, the last three Augusts in a row it had over 300 and at that point we all should be wearing a mask and the mask has nothing to do with COVID it has to do with keeping that air out of your lungs and just shouldn't even be going outside We'll keep watching that. Just think of me as uh, an addition to your local weather reporter here for air quality. But so far, so good. So let's go back to family values. Uh, it's a great topic, isn't it? Family values, especially siblings, the way they love each other. Think of Cain and Abel, well, right up until Abel's offering was not accepted and Cain's was. And, led to the first murder. And then, of course, there was uh, Jacob and Esau, the twins, and how Rachel helped the younger of the twins steal what was rightfully Esau's, deceiving her own husband. And now Jacob has two wives, and the wives have two maids, and the wife he loves is Rachel. She's the younger of the two. They are cousins, sons of his mother's daughter, or mother's uh, brother, rather, Laban. So Leah has now borne four children. Rachel, we are told, is barren. The Lord has closed her womb. That's the language that they use in the writing of Genesis. And Rachel is not happy. Chapter 30 of the book of Genesis, verse 1. When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she envied her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children or I shall die. Jacob became very angry with Rachel and said, Am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Well, okay. She is angry, she's frustrated, she's grieving, she wants to be a mother more than anything, and she wants to be able to keep up with her sister, her older sister Leah, mother of four sons of Jacob. Wow, and she's just heartbroken. And Jacob, he's a man, he doesn't want to listen to her and acknowledge her grief, he wants to fix it, and he can't. So he says, what? I'm not God, I can't fix this. So he's not a listener and he's not a fixer. Well, she decides that at least she's not going to have only children running around from her sister, these four nephews in their household. She's going to send her maid into Jacob, Bilhah. So she says, here's my maid Bilhah, go into her that she may bear upon my knees that I too may have children through her. So he gave, she gave him her maid, Bilhah, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Rachel said, God has judged me, but has also given me a voice and heard and given me a son. Therefore, 
Rachel named him Dan. So Rachel got to name Bilhah's child because after all, Rachel was Bilhah's master. Bilhah was a servant or even a slave at that time. Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Rachel said, with mighty wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. So she named him Naphtali. Ah, everything's good now. Everybody's happy. Except now Leah. Well, she sees what her sister's doing. When Rachel saw that she bore, or uh, when Leah saw that she had ceased bearing children, she took her maid Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Then Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Leah said, good fortune. So she named him Gad. Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Leah said, happy am I, for women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. So by my count, that's now eight sons that we've got. Wow, eight sons of Jacob. Hmm. None by Rachel, though. In the days of wheat harvest, Reuben went and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, then he may lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob comes in the field, came from the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, you must come in to me for I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he lay with her that night. And God heeded Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Well, okay, back in verse 9, it said Leah had ceased bearing children. And now we find out it's not because she had gone through a change, that she had aged out of childbearing years. Rather, Rachel told Jacob, you will no longer treat her as your wife. From now on, let her be as though she is your sister, the mother of your children. That's fine, but you will not have relations with her anymore. And then Rachel says, wow, I really want mandrakes. Wow, I've got to have some mandrakes. You know, there's nothing like, nothing like a good mandrake. If you have seen any of the Harry Potter movies, you may recall that they grew mandrakes in the gardens at... Hogwarts school. Well, a mandrake is a Mediterranean plant. It's in the nightshade family and uh, the leaves are probably poisonous. A lot of purple nightshades are poisonous. The berries no doubt are, but the root, it forms this bulbous root that tends to look like a little human baby with little limbs and bulges and things. And it was said to have magical properties. And Rachel, no doubt, expects this mandrake to somehow open up her wound. So uh, Reuben went out and found them in the field. Well, did he plant them? He must have. Uh, or did he find them? It didn't say he found them just wandering around. So they must have cultivated mandrakes. And Reuben is Leah's son. And Reuben isn't going to give them to his Aunt Rachel without mom's permission. And so there's a price. And Leah says, fine, you've taken away my husband. Well, I want him back for a night. And then you can have your mandrakes. Okay. So Jacob came in. <laughs> I love that word, though. You must come in to me, for I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. Wow. Hmm. So he lay with her that night, and God heeded Leah. She conceived and bore a fifth son. As I said, Leah has... Leah said, God has given me my hire because I gave my maid to my husband. So she named him Issachar. Leah conceived again. Wow, more mandrakes? Hmm, I mean, there's got to be time between these. It's at least a year between the conceptions, one would think. She bore Jacob a sixth son. Leah said, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Now my husband will honor me because I have borne him six sons. She named him Zebulun. Afterward, she bore a daughter and named her Dinah. This is the first mention we have of a girl. So now there's 
Six sons by Leah, two by Zilpah, two by Bilhah, and a daughter also by Leah. So Leah has seven children. Rachel, still a big goose egg on the scoreboard. And it's just about the bottom of the eighth inning. Verse 22. God remembered Rachel. God heeded her and opened her womb. She conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So she named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord add to me another son. She's so pleased with Joseph, she says, I can't wait to have another. So 11 sons so far. Sisters, you, you got to love them because they certainly didn't have much love for each other. 